brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Tony with 1A Auto, here to talk to you today about a very important part of maintenance on your 2.0 turbo, FSI, Volkswagen, or Audi motor. This cam follower is a minor detail, very important and often neglected part of maintenance that can lead to catastrophic failure if left unattended too long. These motors, like in the 07 Audi A4 behind me, use direct fuel injection, which requires a great amount of fuel pressure. This little pump here is a mechanical fuel pump that sits on the top of the engine and rides against the lobe on the back of the cam. As that cam moves in and out, this follower compresses and releases the pump to build the pressure it needs. One very common fault we see with these is the end of the cam follower wearing down or in extreme cases wearing a hole directly through the other side. That can cause the end of the high pressure fuel pump to ride directly on your camshaft load. This can cause anywhere from check engine lights, some common codes are P0087, P1093, and P2293. It can cause loss of power, low fuel pressure, and in extreme cases, the metal on metal can get shavings into the motor and cause catastrophic engine failure. Volkswagen and Audi don't have a specific service interval at this time. We strongly recommend you inspect your cam follower every 20,000 miles under normal driving conditions and under heavy driving conditions or spirited driving, we recommend you check every 10 to 15,000, if not every oil change. Items you will need for removal and reinstallation. Flat blade screwdriver, 13 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter stubby wrench, needle nose pliers, or an eight millimeter triple square, depending on what style pump you have, and a T30 Torx driver. Remove the plastic cover on top of the engine by pulling it up. The high pressure fuel pump is located on the transmission side. This will be the rear and longitudinal mounted motors, Audis and Passats, and on the driver's side in transverse mounted engines, GTIs, Jettas, and Golfs. We're gonna remove the PCV breather tube to make it easier to show you what we're doing. Also, it can give you a little bit more room to work if you'd like. Squeeze the ends of the tubes. Pop them off the retainers. Be careful because this plastic is very brittle. Remove the two connectors on your high pressure fuel pump. You want to pull back carefully on the clips to release. Remove the protective cover on the Schrader valve by unscrewing it. Place a rag or paper towels underneath the Schrader valve. These high pressure fuel pumps can create up to 1800 PSI of pressure. So be careful, wear your safety glasses, and always release the fuel pressure for working on the pump. Just gonna go ahead and push that valve a few times to make sure all that fuel's out of there. Use a 13 millimeter wrench to undo your Schrader valve. Again, always stay back, just in case there's still some pressure in there. I'm gonna leave our rag in case there's still a little bit of fuel. Be sure to store your Schrader valve somewhere clean while working. We're gonna use a 17 millimeter stubby wrench to disconnect the hard fuel line on the bottom of the pump. Once it's loose, the rest should come undone by hand. This high pressure fuel pump is the newer style. So we'll remove the rubber hose on the bottom of the pump. If you have an earlier model, you'll have an eight millimeter triple square banjo bolt down here that you'll have to remove with a ratchet.
remove three T30 Torx screws. This bottom one will be located behind the Schrader valve that we removed earlier. Remove the high pressure fuel pump assembly from the top of the motor. Remove the cam follower. We went ahead and inspected our cam follower. Everything looks good, so we're gonna put it back in, check it again soon. Reinstall the high pressure fuel pump. Reinstall our three T30 bolts. Reinstall your rubber fuel line. Line up your hard line. Start the nut by hand. Finish snugging it up with a 17 millimeter stubby wrench. This is a brass fitting. There's no need to go crazy tight. Be sure your Schrader valve is free of dirt, debris, or any other kind of blockage before reinstalling. Finish tightening with a 13 millimeter wrench. Reinstall your protective plastic cap. Reconnect the two sensors Reconnect your PCV breather by simply pressing it on until it clicks. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, please visit 1AAuto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.